forces we deal with in statics comes from pressure of a fluid. A fluid is a distributed load acting over an area. Pascal's law tells us that the pressure is the same in every single direction. The pressure acts perpendicular to any kind of surface bounding the fluid. It depends on the density and the surface area that it acts over. We'll deal with two different kinds of fluids, compressible fluids and incompressible fluids. Compressible fluids are like gases, and the big thing here is that the fluid pressure is uniform. So along your whole area, the pressure is rho g plus whatever ambient pressure you have at all points. Generally, we're going to neglect that ambient pressure so that we're dealing with gauge pressure. Here, gauge pressure is just rho g times the area of your surface. In compressible fluids, the pressure increases linear with, linearly with depth. So at the surface of the pool, the gauge pressure is zero. But as you go down in the pool, the pressure increases. If you go down three feet, it's rho g times three. Here, my pressure is zero at the top. My pressure is going to increase linearly. So pressure is rho g h plus ambient, or gauge pressure is rho g h. This is the formula you need to have at your fingertips for fluid pressure liquids. In SI units, P is rho g h, that's kilograms per meter cubed, that's your density, meters per second squared, that's acceleration due to gravity, and your h is in meters. That's newtons per meter squared, or pascals. We'll also use kilopascals because the numbers get really big. In English units, we don't generally use rows because we don't like slugs. So we'll use specific gravity. Gamma is equal to rho times g. So P is gamma h. In this case, gamma is given to you in units of pounds per feet cubed. So if you multiply by h, you now have pressure. Here at the bottom, the pressure is in pounds per feet squared, or psi, or kpsi, which is 1,000 pounds per square inch. That's the line at the bottom of the load intensity diagram. In fresh water, there are a couple of numbers that you need to have in mind. Rho is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, or 1 megagram per meter cubed. The specific gravity of fresh water is 62.4 pounds per foot cubed. You need to memorize those two. The steps to solving an engineering problem are the same as they were before. Read the problem, draw the free body diagram, list your loads, write your equilibrium, solve, answer, check. Same. When you're doing finding your free body diagram and identifying your loads for a fluid pressure problem, there are a couple things you need to sort of have in mind. Identify your distributed load. To do that, figure out what area you've got. Figure out what the pressures are at the boundaries around the area. So if you have a rectangular plate, what is it at the top? What is it at the bottom? And then just connect the dots to make your load intensity diagram. Once you have your load intensity diagram, find the equivalent point load. The equivalent point load is going to be the volume of your load intensity diagram. Now remember, this is a 3D system. So it's not an area anymore, it's a volume. And it will be, as any other distributed load is, the equivalent point load is located at the centroid of the load intensity diagram. Not the centroid of the plate, the centroid of the load intensity diagram. So the first example to do is one tank full of water. If you look at this water tank, I have it's four feet by two feet. I have three feet of water in it here. I'm looking for the force from the water on the left-hand side. So I have the side AEBF. The pressure at the top, the top surface of the water, is going to be zero. And it's going to be the zero all the way along. The pressure at the bottom, it only depends on the depth. So the pressure at the bottom at both B and F is rho g times 3. That's a triangular prism. So the volume of my load intensity diagram is going to be the area of the triangle times the depth into the page. That's the magnitude of the equivalent point load. So the force from the water is one half, based on height, rho g3, that's the base here, rho g3, times the height, that's 3, times 2 is the depth into the page, that's this depth, that distance. That volume is the equivalent point load due to the water. It acts at the center of the pressure. 
the center of the pressure. That's at the centroid of the load intensity diagram. Now this is symmetric front to back, so it'll be in the middle. And it's a triangle, so it'll be a third of the way up from the bottom. So my center of pressure is here, one meter back and one foot up. Thanks.